a phenomenal, phenomenal deck. Yeah, I think uh, both players have had phenomenal runs. We've seen both of them uh, so far on stream play very well. Uh, as you can imagine, we're seeing some uh, dice rolls right now to see who's going to uh, get to go first, which is a big deal. Both of them looking pretty calm, and hopefully they're ready for a pretty tricky game because both players are going to bring their all. Yeah, we do have Robin Schultz here on the left and Giovanni Perigala, who we've both seen uh, not only this weekend but today. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're both, like you said, calm, cool, and ready. And we're no doubt going to see just a phenomenal matchup between the two. However, we were talking about this matchup before we, we went live right now, and you feel like Robin's pretty, pretty favored. I think I'm going to put my chips towards Robin if I were a betting man, which obviously I'm not. Uh, <laughs> but you can see he's got a lot of um, great accomplishments behind him. You can see that the uh, Latin American Internationals has been sort of niggling away at him, right. just making top 16s, not quite pushing through. So I'm sure he's really, really excited to have a much bigger performance here. I do think he might have a slight edge in the matchup, mainly because Giovanni doesn't play uh, ends resolve. Uh, so as long as uh, Robin can sort of tempo out, it may be a pretty tricky game for Giovanni. Now, I do want to take a quick look at Giovanni's stats here for us. Top 64 at Latin American International. So both of them have seen success at the Latin American International level. Uh, but I think with just about anybody, you would say, oh man, he top 16 Latin American Internationals. What a phenomenal accomplishment. But with Robin, you're like, oh, he only top 16. Yeah. It's so. like he put it on there just to tell us that he's annoyed about it, basically. <laughs> he has better accomplishments to list. He's just like frustrated by LATAM. And what's what's funny to me is uh, I feel like this is basically one of his strongest regions in. Uh, he seems to have the Latin American uh, metagame really kind of not only scouted out, but you know, he has it figured out. So it's no surprise to me to see him in this uh, top four. And I think that this is telling of the amount of success that he's likely to have in the future if, if uh, things continue to play out the way they have. Now we do see these prize cards come down for both players. We are ready to begin as both players shake hands and Robin Schultz and Giovanni Paragallo ready to begin game one in the second and final top four match before we move on to Championship Sunday, who will who will face Brian DeVries? Will it be Robin Schultz with this fire deck, or will it be Giovanni Paragallo with ADP? Well, Robin, he's already said in interviews a few times that you find your welders and you're feeling good. I've already scouted one welder in his hand. He's gone ahead and got himself a giant half. So, Robin kicking off pretty strong here. So he's feeling good. He's yeah. feeling all right. It's all you need right now. I think he's already got a Cherish Ball developed in hand as well, so... It's not just going to be a draw three. It could be a bigger push this turn. So we're going to see Robin look through some prize cards. I think some other influential pieces of the puzzle are always going to be looking for your Ninetales line. I think looking for your Megalopin and Jigglypuff. That can definitely uh, put a shift in in certain situations. And also your non-Jex attackers are a huge thing that Robin wants to scout quickly uh, because he wants to have answers to Giovanni's current active Pokemon, the Keldeo GX. Does starting with Reshiram and Charizard GX alter your game plan of your Robin? I think it just helps the game plan. I think, realistically, you want to try and be threatening that Double Blaze GX uh, as quickly as turn two. He's even got the Vulpix and threatening the Arceus Palkia Dialga that Giovanni's probably going to need to put into play could just be so, so strong for him. So Robin's had a crazy good start here. Cherish Ball in his hand, he's eyeing it down, but you look at a bunch of fire energies and Cherish Ball, this is not a bad start at all, but uh, more importantly, the, uh, the three fire energies already in play are really what you're looking at. If you can just find another welder, one more welder is really what he's eyeing down. And of course, Cherish Ball looking for Dedene with uh, that Dede change ability to really help him find that welder. Will having so many fire energies then start to hurt him since he's going to be getting rid of him if he ever has the Dede change? I mean, that's the beauty of Robin's list. It is the sort of theme deck build as it's been sort of fondly named. It's playing 18 fire energies. So getting a bunch into the discard pile, rarely an issue and actually can sometimes help you out because it makes your Victini Prism a valid attacker earlier on in the game. There's Dedene coming down, Dede changing away those three fires and that switch. You see, more fires, <laughs> you yeah. see how many he plays. And you see a couple of Jirachis already uh, in his hand as well. So mm -hmm. we're, we're seeing the beginnings of what may be a just crucial uh, second turn here for Robin. Will Robin draw into another Welder? Right. Will he be able to really pressure Giovanni, or will Giovanni be able to start hiding behind this Keldeo? That's 
well, maybe not the Keldeo, but uh, Arceus Dialga and Palkia now comes down and finds a Metal Energy to go with it before we see a Cynthia from Giovanni. Really, I mean, it's just, it feels so rough here for Giovanni after such a good start here from Robin. And we have to reiterate that Giovanni, he doesn't play Ends Resolve. He is a much slower defensive-based build. So even if Giovanni gets to two energies, he can't really go for an auto creation. I think the first attack of the game he has to try and go for is Ultimate Ray, so he can power up some other attackers because I really think he's just, it, you know, it's too scary. It's too easy for Robin to just take an easy three prize knockout with a double blaze GX. So I think Giovanni has to go for an Ultimate Ray as his first attack for the game, which is gonna be built up over a number of turns here because he has no energy acceleration until he gets that Ultimate Ray. So this sort of slow approach could be hurting him in this top four game here. As we All see right. the Pokemon communication, throwing in Megalopony and Jigglypuff, gonna get him a Dedenne GX, trying to freshen up this hand. There's that Dedenne GX you were just talking about after that Pokemon communication. No doubt gonna see a Dedenne change also from Giovanni, kind of matching Robin's speed here. It's he a strange one because he's going to have to attach three energies no matter what he does. Um, before he does anything, so I'm not really sure what he's digging for too much. P potentially, like a choice helmet could help out against some certain attacks, but I, I think he's in awkward spot already <laughs> in this game, just because Robin got the welder, he got the turn attachment, and he even got the Volpix down. So Giovanni's gonna be sweating a little bit. Let's see the because draw here. Because of that Volpix, Ooh, you're absolutely it's awkward, right. Actually, even Arceus Dalga and Palkia cannot feel safe on the bench. And there's the Vulpix getting discarded for the Giant Hearth to start thinning this deck down even further. Yeah, Robin might just have an attached pass here. I, I don't think there's many other options for him. Just has a bunch of Pokemon and energies in his hand. They're not too helpful, and there's a Kelio just saying no at the moment. Not able to find his, uh, his welder there. So no real major explosion on the second turn here from Robin to match the turn one he had. Yeah, it's a little awkward. I think he's still like not in the worst shape, just attaching to the active and passing, but it's just not the absolute ideal. It's not the Stone Cold, uh, like best turn he could have had. And that's the end of Robin's turn as he just does attach that fire energy and passes the turn. Giovanni now. He's got no energies in his hand, and he dead changed away a bunch of energies. This is why I was thinking, you know, you're always gonna have a slower turn no matter what you do here. So but I think he only dead changed away the metals, right? He never had a, a yeah, water energy with it. Yeah, but like I said, when you don't play. Um, any ends resolves. Yeah. I feel like he has to f like start the game with an ultimate ray. If he just expects Robin to not be able to reach, it's such a huge risk. So as you can see, Giovanni just gonna have to Cynthia back in and hope that he finds an energy now. Seems a, seems a little likely to hit it, but you're not right. You're not wrong. I'm not it's, right. <laughs> <laughs> you're not right. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, it's been a long weekend. Yeah, well, <laughs> But Giovanni. I don't take back my words. You're not <laughs> right, Joe. <laughs> All right, we're going to see. A Cynthia. There's that water, by the way. Oh, it's a medal. Oh, it's a medal. <laughs> it's the exact same outcome as he would have had before the dead age change. Except now he has less energies. He does find the Chaotic Swell, which is a really big deal because Robin still does rely on that giant hearth. Yeah, the Chaotic Swell is actually huge against Robin's deck, by the way, as there's so many stadium cards that... Um, that just uh, help Robin out. I think Robin drew a Dene GX. That's a big draw for him. Has to lose a lot of resources in order to Dene change again. And he's going to have to play two Dene's onto his I think he's doing bench. the fire energy count. I think that's the thing that he's worried about. I think he might be a little concerned whether or not if he has the energies to commit to the Charizard for six energies, as well as a gusting effect. Sure. Um, or whether or not he just has to try and dig for a um, welder here and just go through the Keldeo instead. It would turn the game into a longer, sort of drawn out game. He'd have to take more physical prizes. Um, but I think he's a little concerned about the energies that he has available to him, um, because otherwise you kind of see him slam this Dedenne, like, and be pretty pleased about it. So I again, actually think you do go for the Dedenne, by the way. It's all, it all depends on yeah. uh, how many energies he has remaining. I, I don't think it's a bad decision at all, but he just had to double and triple check that there's enough in there for him to um, get over the line and not be forced into a Victini Prism too early. Yeah, we can go back to your previous statement of Robin's deck is built like a, like a, a theme, theme deck. deck yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, and it is prepared for situations like these. Of course, he has to be a little bit careful. You're not wrong there, but he still has to um, kind of take these, uh, these calculated risks, and especially in this particular sense, where you can get just kind of completely blow this game out. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, there goes 
the Giant Hearth getting rid of that Chaotic Swell, so Chaotic Swell taking care of two Giant Hearths there. Yep, exactly. That's the value that the Chaotic Swell can bring. And Robin had the option to go for communication, uh, grab a Ninetales and start gusting around this Keldeo, but here's where you see the reservation behind Robin, because he's a little concerned that he may run out of energy cards if he goes too aggressive and starts binning some. The only real gusting opportunity he could have would be like to Flare Strike the Dedene, right. and that wouldn't have been ideal. I think he's still just going to try and go through um, to Arceus, Palkia, and Dialgus. I agree. Um, and he, unfortunately, just kind of passes the turnover right there. Uh, if he would have had an opportunity to take out this Arceus, Palkia, and Dialga and Palkia, then uh, he absolutely would have, as that would have just blown this game wide open. But instead, Giovanni, with two Metal Energies on this ADP. Ooh, he picks up Water Energy. That's a big pickup from his Cynthia Finds that Water Energy. He's going to get himself in the game now. It's a pretty big deal. He's actually going to go for the Whirlpool Suction as well from his Fion. So Fion, Whirlpool Suction. Forcing Robin to move his uh, Reshiram and Charizard out of the way. Robin going to hand over a Jirachi to Giovanni. Uh, that means that There's this a Ultimate Ray will be taking one prize card, which is pretty nice. And that is Ultimate Ray after that switch. Mm -hmm. So we do have... Uh, the, the first of all, the knockout, but more importantly, the three water energies coming down onto that Keldeo. So now Giovanni, given all this time from Robin, is starting to really set up uh, set up the board. At this point, does Robin go for the the strategy we we're just talking about and knocking out two Arceus, Dalga, and Palkias? Yeah. Or does the strategy have to change as we're starting to see this Keldeo start to get powered up? No, I think the game plan is just right in front of him. I think you're going to go <laughs> six energies to the big old Reshiram and Charizard into the active. You're going to go for that double blaze for the full effect, doing the additional 100 damage. Um, and then you're just going to try and make sure that Victini Prism can get you over the line from then on. I think the game plan is just set in stone for him at this point. Jirachi may be getting benched here. Mm -hmm. And it does. Vulpix, still a Vulpix, not a Ninetales quite yet. <coughs> Yeah, I think the only real like issues for Robin right now is that he can very much be expecting a reset snap to come his way, and he currently doesn't have like the Zep Striker developed. He doesn't even have the Nine Tails developed just yet. Right. Um, so he's kind of walking into a pretty powerful reset stamp, especially when it's combined with a Keldeo. It but limits here's some of the, the first knockout from Robin. ADP goes down. Charizard takes three prizes. Keldeo comes active. Giovanni now down five prizes to three. Will Giovanni start to uh, uh, knock out this Char uh, Rush Ram and Charizard tag team, or will G uh, Robin be able to knock out a final Arceus Dialga and Palkia to take game one? Yeah, I think it's actually a little bit awkward for um, Giovanni to attempt to knock out the active Pokemon. You, we do have the uh, Resolute Blade GX as an option for him to take the knockout, but it just floods the discard pile full of energies, and then he's just staring down the Victini Prism Star, which could be pretty awkward for him. So I think... Um, Possibly trying to go around it is a safer route here. If you can GX through a Dedenne, perhaps, maybe you're a little bit safer. This awkward list from uh, Arceus Dialga. Well, here we go. No reset stamp found. All so right. Robin keeps a large hand. Yeah, um, Robin's hand, about six cards, and has access to Jirachi. There's Giovanni the nine tails. Himself, yeah, he's putting himself two prizes away. So he is trying to put Robin on a shorter clock as possible. Nine so tails is a big draw. He's got himself. Giovanni Pantry. going aggressive. He's just trying to find that welder. If Robin can find welder, I'm sure he has enough fires to take a knockout on the Keldeo. And if that's the case, he's going to be in fantastic shape just because of the lack of energy that Giovanni has to move on from there. Now this chaotic swell getting rid of that heat factory. Win is still available for Robin. Don't forget, he does have nine tails available. But I think even just trying to victini through this Keldeo should more or less secure his spot. It makes him a little bit weaker against more reset stamps that Giovanni's yet to find. Um, but board-wise, I think he's in a phenomenal spot. There's if no welder in that. hand yet, right? Nope, it's the big Stellar Wish. Yeah, big Stellar Wish. Will he find the welder in order to power up this bikini? Does Sint have the... Ooh. Oof. A lot of Pokemon. The Escape Ball's not a bad card. As long as he has more Dedenes available, he could go for a sort of Dede change route. He's going to uh, Pokemon Communication in the Heatran GX. Now. You can see the Turfinator there as well. That's a potential other we'll attacking go for a option. Dedene here. Eyeing down the Jirachi. If he has a switch effect or something yeah, along those lines, instead goes for Jirachi. I think he's a little concerned about potentially uh, Megalopony and Jigglypuff. He's got I the escape I see two welders, I believe. Yeah. 
He's also just making sure whether or not he can afford to play the uh, Fiery, Fiery Flint, Flint yes. first. You see two Fire Energies, you said? I so he should... I thought I saw three Fires. So as soon as... Okay, so seeing this uh, Fiery Flint tells us that he's not going for the Gust for win. And that, oh, there is four. Yes. Okay, he can still win this turn. He has exactly enough to weld onto the Victini Prism Star and then use Nine Tails, Nine Temptations, bring up the Arsis Palkia and Dialga. So as long as he has, because currently he's got Jirachi, Escape Board, and Switch in hand, so he can bench his next Jirachi, Switch, find Welder, it's game, because he can just Escape Board and get back into that Victini, so Indeed, it's another big He needs big the stability. Welder, though. He yep. needs the Welder. There's no, no way around that. There's, we believe, two Welders left in the deck. There's that escape board, retreats this Jirachi, promotes the other one. Will we find the welder for game one for Robin? Five cards deep. There it there, is. There's the welder. That's going to mean game one going to Robin, as that welder will bring two energies onto the Victini, and Nine Tails will bring up that Arky style again. It's Palpian. all in hand. Yep, it's all there for him. It is all there. Game one going to Robin Schultz. Giovanni just about to get this bad news. Robin still going through the motions, does not want to misplay before actually successfully final knocking count. out this Arky style again. Palkia no doubt has enough fire energies. If you look at them all, just about <laughs> every fire energy is in his discard pile like at enough. this moment. <laughs> With the gust on top. Indeed, nine tails, two fires gone. Arky style again, Palkia coming up. Nine temptations. There it is, nine temptations. Three more prizes taken by Robin Schultz. <laughs> count them if Shows you'd like to, Giovanni. <laughs> That's game one, going to Robin Schultz in exciting fashion as we saw just about the largest uh, attack from Victini we have seen this tournament. <laughs> that is a huge, huge turn from Robin. Able to accumulate enough Stellar Wishes to get him over the line, finding that Welder with that second attempt. Definitely a big deal, Victini Prism. Definitely kind of like the all-star card for this archetype. It helps you get through Keldeos. It helps you in non-GX versus non-GX kind of matchups. And of course, it has that potential to just go way over the top if it turns into that late game situation. And it's what we alluded to earlier, Giovanni having to go through that Reshiram and Charizard, or feeling like he had to at the very least, kind of set Robin up for that play the whole time. Yeah, Victini Prism Star's attack name is so aptly named, by the way. Yeah, because it almost feels like it deals an infinite amount of damage sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and Robin did go to infinity that game for sure. Uh, and beyond. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it had to be said, I guess. <laughs> so for Giovanni, like we said, his build is more so built, I believe, for mirror match situations. And the fact that he has no end resolve means he can't be aggressive with the GX attack. That's what's really hurting him. With other builds, although it feels kind of difficult for an Arceus Palco and Dialga to go for that GX attack to try and weave it in, um, you still have that option knowing that you can sort of burst more energies into play with end resolve later on in the game and still get ultimate raise in future turns. With this build, Giovanni has to wait basically until turn three to do anything. Um, unless uh, Robin doesn't fire off welders. If Robin can... Um, have a slow turn one or two, uh, Giovanni may have that breathing room to actually use an ult a, um, ult a creation GX. So now, that's going to be what he's hoping for. Clearly this build has been working for Giovanni yeah. so far. But why, where do you feel like it, it has a larger vulnerability than the lists from Arceus Dalg and Palki that we've been used to seeing with End Resolve? I just think that uh, the End Resolve gives you much more bounce back ability against one hit KO decks. And uh, that's exactly what Robin's deck can be if his turns are fantastic to kick off with so there's no doubt that the tech cards has helped him get to top four um but it does hurt him in this exact game i think we saw three metal energies prized for giovanni that mm -hmm. could be dangerous as of course metal energy tends to be the energy you see the least of in this uh in this deck yeah and victini prism for um robin i think fortunately it was in some of his early prize cards so hopefully he's able to pick those up but it may cause him a little bit of distress and make him play a little differently Pokemon communication to kick things off here for game two between Giovanni Paragallo and, of course, Robin Schultz. Pokemon communication, finding any Pokemon in the deck as long as you shuffle one of these Pokemon back into your deck from your hand. Yep, I think uh, he's had a pretty decent start here, Giovanni. He's kicked off with the Jirachi, which is always uh, fantastic. Gives you a bit of extra dig potential. He's also got that Celtic Swell into play early on, and it's such a disruptive card against um, Welder-based decks because, as we know, Robin is quite reliant on Giant Hearth. Robin's list does have one or two of those uh, Fiery Flints, so um, he's not completely all in on the uh, Giant Hearth, um, but 
even so, it does limit his outs a lot. As we see Giovanni kick off with a Pokemon communication and grab himself Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia. So Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia now going to start getting some energy attached to it. Remember, Giovanni, the earliest he can really start getting going is turn two with Altered Creation GX as his attack. But don't really want to put uh, Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia into uh, harm's way either. So it's kind of a calculated uh, situation that you're uh, faced with if you're Giovanni as Robin just has so much potential to just go off and uh, that is going to be the end of the turn here for Giovanni. Jirachi wakes up at the end of the turn and with a Dene start here from Robin, we're going to have to see some some help from his hand really if he wants to start to go off the way he did game one. Yep, he's got Pokemon communication and Cherish Ball, so I think by no means he's going to have a terrible turn. Um, it really does depend on how the Dedenne GX treats him on the other side of this six cards, essentially. Do remember there's also one Dedenne GX in his prize cards. Uh, so with starting one and prizing one, this is his only chance to use Dedenne Change. So a little unfortunate for Robin here that he's basically having all of the eggs put into this one Dedenne Change basket. He does find that Rashram and Charizard mm -hmm. now looking through his deck to see what's prized at this point. Probably realizes Victini's prized. Yep, Victini being prized, a uh, Dedenne prize is equally huge, I think, to be honest. Sure. Really hurts his sort of push potential. As we've seen, so many energy cards, a few, like even in game one, he just drew into a hand of energy off of his first Dedenne change and had to just have a slow couple turn attach passes. Um, so he's not going to be feeling like great that he's had to sort of waste one in the prizes and one wasted in the active position as well. So uh, a little shaky start for Robin here. Uh, not ideal by any means. Still, though, Dead Egg Change can always change that, uh, I guess, aptly named ability there. Yep. And Restram and Charizard gets an energy on it that may be all we see. Well, of course, first we counter the Chaotic Swell, yep. and that may mean uh, Dead Egg Change. There it is. Two Fire Energies get discarded. Will these top six cards start to help Robin here? Remember, yet to play a supporter card. Likely looking for a welder. <laughs> you know Instead. what we said earlier? <laughs> <laughs> you have that ca capacity to just draw into Hands of Energy. That's certainly what's happened here. That's a really, really rough yeah. hand for Robin. Does have a Jirachi that he can bench, but I mean, it really does nothing in this particular situation. Of He's going to bench the Vulpix. I don't mind that at all. Um, we saw how Giovanni could buy himself some free turns just by Keldeo being there the whole time. So he also has that uh, backup Chaotic Swell. It's exactly why Giovanni didn't go for the Dede change last turn. Um, interestingly, he gets rid of a Water Energy. Again, I feel like. This board is a lot safer, so I actually think going for the Ultra Creation is open to him this time, oh, where absolutely. it wasn't last game. Yeah, there's there's really no major danger at this point. <laughs> no major danger on Robin's side. Major danger only with one energy attached to it is a lot less <laughs> danger. It's really just kind of like purring at him at this point. Like it's, <laughs> it's just, it's not threatening whatsoever. It's a little, you know, it's, it's a tiny little... Um, puppy here or, <laughs> <laughs> or is something similar where is this going <laughs> Giovanni he's going Basically, to it's just looking cute. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to uh, Pokemon communication back in the Pokemon he just tackled out this is going to help him develop the Blitzel of course he is, the, is playing the Zeb Striker engine uh, both players are opting to use Zeb Striker in their deck list it can definitely help out against reset stamps which is a big deal I feel like Giovanni's supporter for turn might have to be the Malo and Lana unless the Stellar Wish uh, gets him an Escape Board or a Switch here. Optimal the card here. Escape Board's great. Yep. Yep. Escape Board is great. Means he can use a better supporter this turn instead of having to spend Malo and Lana. There it is, Escape Board indeed. So I think we'll be seeing the Altered Creation GX attack this game, really changing uh, Giovanni's win condition. Um, now it, you know, there's two Dedenes on the board. It can be as simple as knocking two of those out for him to um, just win a prize race. Yeah, really, that's that's not where you want to be if you're Robin Schultz here. First, see. we see Jirachi use another Stellar Wish. Yep, I think this means that he's content using the Malo and Lana. Obviously, healing's not a big factor in this matchup, so rather than going for like the Cynthia Caitlyn that was also in his hand um, to like get back a supporter, instead he's going to like Stellar Wish to dig further into the deck instead um, and just throw this Malo and Lana away and finish on the Alter Creation. Yeah, you want to set up your following turn here with our Arceus style again, Palkia. You already know you're going to be Altered Creationing for a little bit. <gasps> so as long as you can start getting go. some energy onto your bench Pokemon from that next turn on out, you're going to feel very comfortable with the remainder of your deck. However, we see a Welder here from Robin big right draw. away. That's more energy attached to that Reshiram and Charizard, and a big draw indeed. But unfortunately for him, 
Just more fire energies. Yep, and this communication is far less valuable when there aren't uh, Dedenes around. So Robin just forced to put it down. He's also going to, uh, well, he's debating attaching to this Dedene GX. He doesn't want to give Giovanni the easy three prizes. Um, so he's just going to put the Jirachi active, go for a Stellar Wish here. Hopefully he can find himself a welder for next turn and try and steal tempo back by the looks of things. Oh, oh, it's the <laughs> welder, though. Four fire energies and then the final card we were laughing, being that welder. But it's a huge pickup from yeah. him again. It's a really, really huge pickup. It truly is, uh, as it was looking grim until we got to that final card. And now Jirachi, Stellar wishing for basically the best card in Robin's deck there. Yep. As sure. now Welder does open up a lot of opportunities for Robin for the following turn and on. Yeah, so there's a couple of paths Giovanni can try and go for. It's essentially he can be content to knock out the Jirachi and then he only has to knock out the Retro and Charizard. Um, and especially if you're able to power up a Keldeo, that's going to be pretty easy pickings for him. But that's probably going to be his priority this turn. Um, alternatively, if he doesn't have a Keldeo to attach to, he could try and go for great catcher plays one after the other on the Dedene. So you saw he had an Arceus Palkia Dialga in hand, but he's much more content to try and find a Keldeo off of this Cynthia, uh, because then he will just be one gust away on that um, Reshiram and Charizard, thanks to the hidden damage buff that he's used uh, by his altered creation GX. So Keldeo, a big pickup if he's able to this turn. Indeed. So now that Arceus Dialga Palkia gets that metal energy attached, and then we see a Cynthia looking for a Keldeo right now. That's the ideal Pokemon to find. We want to see an ultimate race start to power Ooh, up this Keldeo. Pokemon definitely helps. Pokemon might get him there. Pokemon communication gets that uh, Drampa, puts it back into the deck. Of course, Keldeo GX now yep. comes down. As soon as he finds the Keldeo, he's, he's like, yeah, my turn's done. I've got everything I need. <laughs> yeah, that's going to mean that Keldeo GX is now sitting on the bench, waiting with its pure heart and sonic edge. So Robin needs a lot. He needs to welder to the Charizard, get a turn attachment, and Ninetales up the Keldeo. <laughs> That's what he has to do. He has to double blaze for the full value. There's the Ninetales. Wow, OK. <laughs> there's, there's the Welder. <laughs> so if you can Welder into Fiery Flint and cards that don't matter, this would be crazy. Fiery yes, Flint, Fiery a huge Flint draw. would be a huge draw. Does not find the Fiery Flint, though. They're all useless in this situation because there are no Dedene GX around. Yeah, Dedene prize, the final Dedene prize. Unfortunately for him, he does not find that Fiery Flint. I mean, it really looked like like things were starting to look up for Robin there at the beginning of this turn, but. Well, I'm gonna have one final look, just making sure, I'm pretty sure he was aware about the Dedene, and he might just be resigned to go to a game three here. I can't see what else he can do. He can pay retreat, but it just feels so ugly. Might just be delaying. Um, you, you could know, still potentially get it. No, grab a actually, Heatran. never mind. <laughs> it does seem to be. Heatran only gives up three prize cards, at yeah, least. Yeah, riding on the wall. Heatran potentially able to extend this game for Robin. I mean, Robin has to move out the active here. Right. Absolutely has to. So. So close, yet so far away. Fiery the Fiery Flint would have put him in good shape, for yeah. sure. It was the last piece of the puzzle that was missing, but it was not found. Let's see the escape board try and make that chunky Reshiram and Charizard a little bit less painful. Also seeing the Pokemon communication, he can put in that Heatran. He's just going to re be retreating into a Jirachi here, so we can get a Stellar Wish, no doubt. Pokemon communication finds that Jirachi we were just talking about. Jirachi now going to be able to Stellar Wish, potentially finding something like a Fiery Flint for the following yep. turn. Yeah, exactly. So at this point, Robin kind of just hoping that there's no answer from Giovanni, and he's able to just maintain this board state and go with one more shot at uh, potentially able to get a big GX attack here from Reshram and Charizard. It's not what he's after. It's really not what he's after at all. Probably just finding a Pokemon communication there. Yeah. He can like Does throw he have a the, he or can throw the Ninetales back into the deck now to try and find another Jirachi if he has any more remaining. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure he plays a full four copies. But yeah, that's that's a rough pickup. It's not the dream. Jirachi just stellar wishing that's the end of Robin's turn. Robin now potentially going to be going down two prizes to six in the second game. Giovanni may be just inches away from closing out this second game and sending them both to a game three. There would be no more epic way to close out this day two than going to game three between Robin Schultz and Giovanni Paragala, both players who have had standout tournaments this, uh, this weekend. We've seen them both throughout the entire weekend. Both have been just cruising along 
and no surprise to see them facing off in this top four. No surprise to see them potentially going to a game three, but Giovanni still has a tiny bit of work to do before we can get there. Yeah, the only thing remaining for Giovanni is looking to find a great catcher. That's why you're seeing him play the switch now. Robin doesn't play any reset stamps in his deck list, so there's no way that um, no he can be disrupted. Yet. So Giovanni just going to have to go for the Pokemon communication. This allows him to get the Zeb Striker, which also um, is a good card to help him push a little bit further into the deck. Um, the Fio, not like the worst card in general, because it could at least force Robin to move an active Pokemon. It could have been like good enough to hold, to be honest. Um, so it's interesting that Giovanni is going for the Zeb Striker for a more sort of guaranteed route here. So Zeb Striker just going to give more draws to Giovanni. Giovanni really hoping to find that great catcher to close this game out. Sprinting Doesn't want to have to struggle along. Do we find a great catcher here? Four cards drawn with Sprint. Chaotic There's swell. a Chaotic Swell. Reset stamps galore. Game not over here. The Keldeo would have been game. That's game why he pushed for not it. over. Ultimate Ray now potentially just going to be the attack. Bringing Giovanni down to two prizes remaining. You could have think closed it out. Yeah, you got to think he'll attach the Choice Helmet here. I don't see why you wouldn't. Yeah. There's the Choice Helmet. Going down to two prize cards on that one prize Jirachi. Such a powerful a bit, uh, uh, effect from the Ultra Creation. That's the Robin end of game two. Robin air. scoops him up. Yeah. Going down to game three. Giovanni Perigallo wins this se uh, second game. Seeing how we don't have an explosive start from, G uh, from Robin. Instead, actually Robin just struggling to get anything going there. And Giovanni just able to win a very lopsided game two. We are down to one final game in this top four. Who's going to win? Will it be Giovanni Paragallo or will it be Robin Schultz? Yeah, let us hear your uh, support for both of these players. They've both done fantastically well so far in this tournament. Uh, Robin, potentially a little unfortunate, starting at Dene, prizing at Dene, really did hurt his outs in that second game. Uh, but he will be able to go first in this game three, so he's by no means out of the picture. No, absolutely not. We've seen how actually this matchup is actually pretty close if you really think about it. Uh, there's a lot that has to go right for both players for them to have a uh, like a blowout victory. But instead, if both players start to get their engines going, then really, I mean, it's kind of a back and forth affair. Keldeo GX just has a lot of, uh, a, provides uh, Robin with a lot of questions that he needs to answer. And if he can't answer them fast enough, then Giovanni's going to be able to kind of cruise along. At the same time, if Robin just gets another Retroam and Charizard going fast enough, then that just could basically end the game before it even begins. Yeah, it's it's exactly that. It's Robin has the answers in the deck to deal with whatever Giovanni throws at him. It's just if he can find them in a timely manner. Sure. If they're not found early enough, Giovanni will take that one turn, that little yard, and go a mile with it. So Robin Schultz, Giovanni Paragallo, both likely feeling plenty of nerves here as they're shuffling up for game three despite already having been here before uh, at least robin in this case you still have to feel a lot of pressure you're, you're in a tight game three situation mm -hmm. your tournament on the line you're already tasting basically uh championship sunday and of course the title of the latin american international champion and there's there's reason for both of these players to be a little bit um, nervous right now. Robin's just for the nature of his own deck list. He, we've seen a few times that he can just draw into hands of fire and just be left with nothing. And Giovanni, because he's on the back foot, uh, Robin gets to have like an additional turn above him before um, he's able to start attacking with Ultimate Ray from the off. So both players have reason to be a little bit nervous right now, and hopefully none of that gets to either player. And we're going to see a fantastic starting to see conclusion. some prizes. First thing I notice is that Dedene, but only one prize. Ooh, a few uh, energies as well. Second thing I notice is a lot of energy cards <laughs> on one side of the field and triple Pokemon communication. These are wild prize cards. Unreal. <laughs> Robin's trying to stop, to stop smiling. I think you can hear the crowd outside. <laughs> wow. No doubt. Both of them realizing likely that something's going on. Not quite sure where or with who, but something's going on. I think on. he's just worried of doing a deck search, to be honest. He's like, okay, what's going on here then? <laughs> He well, is going to kick things off. It's going to be a little bit hard to deck search when three of your Pokemon communications are prized. All right, kicking things off is Robin Schultz here. Remember, game three, winner advances, loser is eliminated. Jirachi start here for Robin, so that's always a good start, but of course, Giovanni matching it. Yep, exactly. Robin also has the Cherish Ball for Reshiram and Charizard. That tells us he's got at least a playable hand of sorts or another Dene in his own hand. Um, so he's going to be looking through counts now. I think especially with the crowd at your ear, you definitely want to do your deck searches because you want to make sure you don't miss anything. It's just Pokemon communication. Yeah, communication, yeah. not really a card that you've really... It just limits your outs, yeah. right? 
you know, when you're doing your prize search, you don't really prioritize Pokemon communication as one of the well, cards you want to make sure. Is, <laughs> that's the fourth. Well, <laughs> so unlikely to see it, but he does. He's probably going to try and protect this Ninetales. Um, going around the Keldeo can sometimes be much easier than going through it. Uh, so he's having a debate here. He's going to communication in the Ninetales, and he's going to go ahead and search out probably the Vulpix here. He already has the Reshiram and Charizard, as well as um, the Dene GX in his hand. Instead, we're going to see the Ditto. This gives him a bit more versatility. It means that if he finds either Stage 1, he has the option to evolve that way around as well. Of course, Zeb Stryker, always a good choice, but, if, but not, the only, uh, not the only evolution in this deck. Remember, right. Ninetales just being such a powerful potential uh, Pokemon to evolve into, so Ditto, a great choice to pick up here with your only Pokemon communication. It's going to be hard for him to find these evolutions, though, with all, with all these communications prized. And currently, Robin is lacking the Welder, I believe. So it's, again, good old Dede Change trying to help him out. He's going to be able to see 11 cards, technically, because he also has the Stellar Wish available to him. So he can manually attach to his Reshiram and Charizard. I imagine we're going to be seeing the both of these GXs go into the discard pile, actually, because he has to be concerned about Giovanni's option to use Megalopony and Jigglypuff. So Robin's, unfortunately, had to get rid of one or two Pokemon that could potentially help him out. That sort of door is shut on him now. No Welder just yet. A bunch of Fire Energies, though. So this Stellar Wish, again, it's a big one. Yeah, fairly fortunate to not have the Rash Ram and Charizard prized in any of these games as it's just such a crucial piece of the puzzle. But more crucial is a Welder. Will he find it with a Stellar Wish? It doesn't no, seem so. Not even a switching effect. He has another Jirachi in his hand, but he's not able to even find a second chance, really with any of his switching outs. That's really, really rough for him. He can try and thin the deck a little more with a giant half, but... Yeah, especially because you know that your opponent's likely to have something like Chaotic Swell and all these things, so yeah. you might as well try to get a giant heart off whenever whenever possible, now being <laughs> ideal. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be... It's going to be a rough start here for Robin without having access to that... Um, to that welder. No it, energy yeah. acceleration means no real pressure on a Giovanni, and Giovanni can start powering up that Arceus dial again. Palkia without feeling too uh, too afraid. Really, Giovanni's strategy is going to be a little bit more effective than it would have been against a turn one welder from Robin. Absolutely, and I think Giovanni, after not seeing a welder at the end of the turn, when Robin just has to pass, he's going to have a huge sigh of relief. Uh, it's going to be amazing dance. for him. I'm, I'm sure he will, to be honest. I think he needs a break like this to be able, able to sort of get into the game. Especially going second. Yeah, of course, yeah. So there's that flip to signal that that's going to be the end of Robin's turn. Still asleep is Jirachi, and Giovanni now looking at his hand, has a communication of his own, has, I believe, a Dedene in hand. Yep. I think his hand's decent. Uh, Chaotic Swell, obviously a good card to put into play. Um, he's got the sort of debate of, do I go for the um, communication just to guarantee an Arceus Palkia Dialga early, or do I keep this open to me? Uh, but picking up Tackle, that makes all of <laughs> all of his decisions very easy. He can now go ahead and grab himself Arceus Palkia Dialga. I think he's already got a Cynthia and Caitlyn in his hand as well. Um, so his hand is looking pretty decent at this point. He, too, is going to be looking for his prize cards, of course, uh, making sure he's got Keldeo's available, <laughs> making sure he's got potentially even Mega Lopini and Jigglypuff available to him. Great catches. Um, these are all things that you want to keep an eye out for, even things like Reset Stamps and um, your Chaotic Swells. These are good cards to keep track of, for sure. Yeah, we mentioned Just how... Just using one Arceus, Palki, and Dialga. That oh. probably tells us that he will be happy to Dede change this turn. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's rethinking things. Mega Lopini and Jigglypuff come into play. Well, coming into the hand at least. So, we we knew that uh, Robin uh, okay. was a little bit nervous there after hearing the crowd. Of course, Giovanni also a tiny bit nervous after uh, hearing the crowd roar and after the prizes <laughs> get brought down. So, no doubt, likely uh, looking at his prize cards may, or at his deck, tr trying to figure out what prize cards are gone. And uh, now we see a Blitz will come down to match that Arceus style again, Palkia. Really, you know, even though we're looking for a lot of explosion out of Robin. We're kind of looking for a little bit of the opposite from Giovanni. Yep. From, from Giovanni, we're looking for a nice, settled down, slow-paced game. Give him and some turn attachments. <laughs> indeed. Give him some turns. Give him some time to start setting oh, up wow. his Oh, wow. Okay, so he's he's not happy with a Cynthia Caitlin. Great catcher. He's just going to great catcher, attach, and dead a change. Try and deny Robin his stellar wishes because he knows that Robin doesn't have Welder currently. Try and make Robin have more switch effects. Uh, it's a really, really smart pit, um, great catcher there. Thoughts on maybe uh, going after Dedenne? I mean, I know that it's a little bit weak to escape board, but... Yeah, I think uh, it's too easy for Robin to just pay retreat and still um, get back into the Stellar Wish. Also, I think you want to be hitting into the Retro and Charizard regardless, so... 
I think this is definitely the, the best call, just because uh, the Retro Charizard has such high retreat cost. Now another Jirachi gets benched here as we see that Metal Energy on the oh, Arcus huge. And Valiant Valkyrie. A switch from the top <laughs> of the deck. There is that uh, Rush Ram and Charizard com coming back to the bench. Does not want to be uh, anywhere near the fighting zone there, really. And now we see Jirachi, Stellar Wish again. Giovanni tried his best to avoid that. Oh, there's Welder. But was not able to. And now a Welder from the top of Robin's deck. Absolutely massive. He's got a bunch of Fire Energies in his hand. Welder gets him digging deeper into the deck, and we already know he has the Dene GX in here in hand as well. So I think um, he's going to be looking in much, much better shape now. Robin has kind of got out of this early slump. Welder, just a huge card here for Robin. Just needs additional energies as fast as possible, does, uh, does Robin. And a huge pickup out of that Stellar Wish. Will he be able to make the most out of it, though? Yep, and I really like that he can just commit fully to this Retro and Charizard. There's no fear from Giovanni just yet of getting Keldeo around. So you can get maybe even a Flare Strike off on this Jirachi. is still value here, to be perfectly honest with you. Three cards drawn here for Robin. Really no, not much help as he just finds Jirachi and a couple of fires. But that Jirachi going to come down onto the field. Now we see that uh, third <laughs> energy hit the, <laughs> hit the field for Robin on from this turn. And that's going to be the fourth energy attached Kay. onto Retro and Charizard. Uh, rolls to see if he's still awake or if he's still asleep. He's not. He's now awake. Now, uh, the first play from Giovanni is going to be an escape board onto his Jirachi of his own. So we're going to be seeing a potentially altered creation GX here from uh, from Giovanni if he chooses to put it in uh, the line of fire. It, it's so scary for Giovanni to alter creation. I think he still has to play passively. I think he has to just be ultimate raying as his first attack because you just go way too all in, and then you put yourself, you know, three turns away from doing anything to your opponent. So Giovanni yeah, you just has to chill on the bench. Yeah, <laughs> you basically just lose the game if your opponent has another uh, another welder. He has to just chill, attach, play the Cynthia, get some stellar wishes in, develop his board. Uh, With that said, I mean, you you do know that uh, at least you have a really good idea that your opponent like uh, is very unlikely to have a welder in hand. Well, true, but I think you can't take the risk. I really I mean, don't. I agree. <laughs> you got to make him have the Welder and the Nine Tails and the additional Fire Energies all when there's a Swell in play that denies the Giant Hearth. So The major disadvantage of going second and playing against the Welder deck. Yep. When Can't. they find it, there's, there's just so much that you have to be aware is in their range. You know, Even if it's not currently in their hand, it's within their range of you just getting completely destroyed. Giovanni looking through his deck, well, looking at the top five cards of his deck, finds a Cynthia. Now, yep. oh, okay, I was getting a little afraid. No, no, he, he's <laughs> just chilling. I think he's fully aware of the way he's, bi he's built his deck list. He has to play in such a way um, that he has backup attackers ready to go to deal with Robin. He has to respect that Retro and Charizard. It's far too intimidating right now. Finds a Pokemon communication with the second Jirachi. Yep, looks like he's happy to shuffle, so I don't think he's going to be doing it. I think he's just uh, accumulating cards to pass it Robin's way. That's the end of his turn. Giovanni passes the turn with two energy on Arceus, Dalga, and Palkia. Now, if we get a turn from Robin that includes a Welder, a couple of Fires, and a Great Catcher, <laughs> I mean, the this Nine game Tails, is right? It's the Nine Tails that oh, he needs. Yeah, yes, a, a Nine Tails and a Welder more kicks fires. things off. There's Welder. <laughs> Jeez, this is pretty sweet from Robin. Got himself another Welder. He so actually drew a Turf Knight of a turn, which makes potential Dede changes even more sketchy. Uh, so this exact pickup from the Stellar Wish is actually massive right now. Seems like Welder is, in most situations, about the most massive pickup you can have. Yeah, if, I mean, if Robin ideally finds that Nine Tails <laughs> off of the Welder and like one more energy there and just deals with Giovanni's energy. two energy, I mean, like, how does he fall behind at this point? Nine <gasps> There's Nine Tails. Does he, have, does he have a Fiery Flint? I think Swell is the only thing keeping him at bay from making the... Oh, no, he already has the energies. He he's just missing a switch effect. Hand. The only thing he's missing is a switch effect right now. He could evolve into Ninetales. He could do Nine Temptations. He could Dead A change. If he finds an escape board or a switch, he can knock out Arceus Palkia and Dialga. Giovanni's only threat. Does not have the switch, though. No real way to find it. Robin has to make the push here, don't you think? I feel like... Well, I mean... I don't see Maybe any, I'm being too greedy. I don't see any <laughs> actual harm in going for it. Like, depends on how many outs he feels he has available to him. I think you do it. I think you do it. Yep. He's, he thinks you do it too. He's making plays. There it is. Nine temptations. Giant Hearth gets rid of that stadium. 
We're going to be seeing a dead A change. That's, That's the final good. Pokemon huge in play time. Huge, for huge Robin. Are we going to have a switch? Switch or a skateboard? Do we find a switch? Do we find an escape board? There There's are. the escape board. A skateboard onto the Jirachi. That's going to mean one huge knockout for Robin Schultz and no energy in play oh here goodness. for Giovanni. Giovanni, Giovanni just, just extends the hand. That's going to be the end of the game. Robin wow. Schultz wins a game three and moves on to Championship Sunday, defeating Giovanni in two game, well, in three games, two games to one. Wow. We just saw some fantastic play from both players. Um, I really do respect how uh, the matchup was played by Giovanni. He knew the limitations of his own deck list. He had to play defensively, and just if Robin had the combination, there was nothing he could do. And you, oh, it's it's very harsh to see that his deck didn't have enough bounce back ability. I'm sure playing no copies of End Resolve um, has helped him throughout the game with the other inclusions that he's had with his deck list. Obviously, when you go first, the End Resolve is pretty much an awful card you can have <laughs> in your deck. So. Um, Playing the other techs in his decklist has helped him get to this spot, but against the aggression of a 